We're joined now by Education Minister Christopher Pine and Deputy Opposition Leader Tanya Plebiscet. Good morning to both of you. Hi, Lisa. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Tanya. Christopher Chris. Pine, I'll start with you. The government has had ex access to these recommendations for some time now. How much influence have they had over the budget we'll see in 11 days' time? Well, Lisa, uh, I agree with your introduction to the, uh, this segment that this is a report uh, to the government. It's not a report of the government, and therefore uh, it's, it's a shopping list, if you like, of all the various things that a government could do uh, if it wanted to. Uh, some of these things that the, the government will adopt, uh, others it will reject, uh, but the overall theme, of course, is that we have to get uh, our spending under control. We have to start living within our means again. Uh, we've had years of, of rising deficits and ballooning debt, and it isn't sustainable. And I think the Australian public know that. They know it's going to be a tough budget, uh, and they're ready for that. And they changed the government last September because they wanted a group of people in charge of the budget who would make those tough decisions, who wouldn't keep living beyond our means. So it is going to be a difficult period for a little while, but uh, there is a a light on the other side of the tunnel and that is that uh, if we can do the necessary things to get our spending under control uh, we'll be able to grow our economy again provide the jobs that are necessary and set the country on a sustainable path into the future. You're right, the Australian people did vote you in in 2013 but it was on a promise from the Prime Minister that there would be no cuts to health, pensions or education. Uh, he did that many times on the show, let's have a listen. The only party which is going to increase taxes after the election is the Labor Party. No country has ever taxed its way to prosperity. A, I'm not going to break election promises, but if I change my mind and on something important, promise, I would go and seek a mandate for you... it. Christopher, these will have to be broken promises, won't they? Well, I think you'll find in the budget, Lisa, that uh, there won't be overall cuts to education and to health and to welfare, but we will obviously reprioritise within our spending uh, the programs and projects that the coalition uh, thinks are more important. But obviously, but spending. The problem is the Prime Minister said no cuts. Well, there will certainly be cuts to some Labor programs. So of course, we are there talking will be. broken promises. No, because we always said that the overall spending on things like education in my portfolio, let's take education, the overall spending on education will continue to rise, but there will be cuts within education to Labor's programs. I mean, you don't change the government and then simply keep the government's programs before and add your own. Obviously, the public changed the government because they knew that we would reprioritise spending but spending will increase, it's just that we have to stop the rampant increases in spending that were occurring under Labor. Labor left us with $123 billion of accumulated deficits and debt rising to $667 billion. But of course the government will need to keep spending money, governments always do. The question is whether we can afford the rampant increases of spending that Labor proposed and obviously we can't. Tanya Plebisic, your response? Well, Lisa, I think what you see with the Commission of Audit is the blueprint for a budget of broken promises. You're quite right. The Prime Minister said no cuts to health, no cuts to education, no changes to the pension before the election. And now you've seen a, a, a array, a smorgasbord, of cuts to those very things. You see an ordinary family on $100,000 a year set to lose $8,000 in family benefits. You see pensioners not only waiting longer for the pension, you see the pension growing more slowly and you see means testing of the pension to include the family home. $500,000 family home. Now I don't know that there's many uh, homes, particularly in those older suburbs in Sydney or Melbourne or Brisbane even, that wouldn't hit that $500,000 mark. Uh, you see as well um, further cuts to health. This is basically the end of Medicare for anyone on more than $88,000 a year. When it comes to education, Christopher's talking about how he's trying to rewrite the promises he made. He said before the election that you could vote Labor or you could vote Liberal and your school would get the same funding 
Now he's backpedaling, he's running from that promise as quickly as he can. He's trying to um, implant a false memory in the, in the psyche of the Australian people. The problem Those is we can't keep spending the way we've been spending. There have to be cuts. Well, which, actually, which are the recommendations? Lisa, I, really have to, I really have to take uh, Christopher on on this one as well. Since coming to government, this government has more than doubled the deficit. They've added $68 billion to the deficit. Now, if they're so concerned about runaway spending, why does the Prime Minister have a $5.5 billion a year paid parental leave scheme? $5.5 billion a year, and he's saying it's a budget emergency. People just don't believe it. Uh, the government's trying to amp up or hype up this idea of a budget emergency to justify the cuts they've always wanted to make. They've never believed in Medicare. They've never believed in decent funding for public schools. They've never believed in the age pension. This is just a, a set of excuses to make the cuts they've always wanted to make. Christopher Pine, last night uh, on the 7.30 report, the Finance Minister, Matthias Cormann, all but confirmed that that deficit tax will go ahead. Is that now confirmed? Uh, well, in the budget, uh, you'll see everything that the government is going to do. And I, I don't think that the Australian public are mugs, Lisa. In fact, I'm absolutely certain that they're not. And they know that uh, the Coalition, of course, supports the age pension. They know that we support Medicare. They know we're the best friend Medicare ever had because we want to make it a sustainable health system. They know that we promised... It, Christopher. Oh, what rubbish. Tanya, that's just nonsense. And the public know that's nonsense. I mean, you can't say things that are palpably untrue and expect the public so to believe them because they don't. So people on $88,000 a year will no longer have access to Medicare? Well, the Commission of Audit is a report to the government. It's not a report of the government. And the Australian public are not crazy. They elected a, a new government last September because they knew that the unsustainable budget position that Labor had given us wasn't something that Labor was ever going to address. They wanted a government of adults who were going to address it, and we will keep that commitment. Why do you this want to spend budget and a half billion on paid parental leave every year if there's a budget emergency, Christopher? Is that the most important spending there is? Is it more important than the age pension? Well, Tanya, I, I didn't realise you were the hostess of the program asking all the questions, but nevertheless, no, the paid I'm, parental leave... I'm very leaves... happy for you two to have a conversation. <laughs> no, it's well, happy to get Lisa, to Lisa, I thought that was what you got paid to do, but anyway, <laughs> the, the truth is that the paid parental leave scheme is a workplace entitlement, it's not a welfare entitlement. Now, Tanya, being from the left of the Labor Party, sees everything through the prism of welfare and government spending. We see the paid parental leave scheme being a workplace entitlement for it's women. It's still five and so, a half so billion that they can... dollars a year, Christopher, and only a fraction of that, Lisa, is raised by the levy on business. Taxpayers will be paying for it and, and pensioners will be paying for it with a cut in the age pension. The Prime Minister did make it clear, Christopher, that uh, this was his signature policy and it would not be touched. Is that another broken promise? Well, we took the paid parental leave scheme to two elections, Lisa, and it was endorsed uh, last so September. So why back down so a... easily on it? Uh, well, we haven't uh, backed down so easily, as you say. What we've, well, what the Prime we are Minister doing... has said that the capping will go from 150000 down to one hundred. Uh, well, what we're saying is that uh, women need to have a generous paid parental leave scheme, a fair dinkum one, so they can participate in the workforce. So they want to have children because we need to boost our, our population uh, and because that's good for productivity in the Australian economy. But it also has to be affordable and sustainable. And I think the, the program that's being placed uh, before the Australian people by the Prime Minister is a sustainable one that will be supported. But the most important thing is that Labor can't really try and now wear the clothes of economic responsibility. When they, left, when they came to government in 2007, they had money in the bank there was no deficit, there was no national government debt. Uh, se six years later, there was $123 billion of deficits and debt rising to $667 billion. And this government is setting about fixing the mess that Labor left us. And I think the Australian Lisa, public expect left, us to do that. We left such a mess that when we came into government, Australia did not have three AAA credit ratings. When we left government, we did. We had okay. three AAA credit ratings. The world judges us as having a miracle economy, having survived the GFC in the best shape of any advanced economy. All right. Well, well you keep believing that, We'll have to leave it there. Uh, thank you to both of you. 11 days to Pleasure. go. It's going to be very interesting 11 days of speculation, that's for sure. Tanya Plebisek. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks very much. See and you, thanks Chris. to you, Christopher Pine. Thank you.